two inflections. Like that's that's all you've got. Now, of course, if we didn't know anything about this, like if they hadn't given this as a lead-in, how would you show that there are two inflections? How would you go about doing that? You can go to the second derivative, wouldn't you? Um, you'd solve for when it's equal to zero, uh, which you can see. Well, what is the second derivative, by the way? What is the second derivative? Oh, I just did it. Oh, yeah? I did it wrong. <laughs> um, when you do d squared y on dx squared, let's just quickly do it again. So it's going to be v u dash. Yeah, did I do it right? Yeah, yeah I reversed the order, that's why I'm getting confused. Plus u, what's v dash? 2x. Two two. Minus 2x. Two that's why I didn't know. There you go, right? Um, you can go ahead, it looks to me when I factorise this out, I'm going to get a quadratic there, which should better have two solutions, right? And then off I go, and I will show that there's two places where it's zero, and then I need to show that it actually changes, right? That's the way I would go about it. But clearly, let me read the wording for you again, because you'll get questions like this. Examine the behaviour of y as x approaches infinity, done. And hence, deduce. You have two words there that kind of fence you in. Hence, deduce. Right? So the first thing, the hence means, you have to use this in some way. And appealing to the second derivative pretty much ignores this. Like, I don't need this fact to use the second derivative. Okay? And secondly, like, they're saying it has some kind of logical connection. Right? So how do I, how do I pull this in? Okay? Yeah. Is it like because that curve, it has to have an intercept at negative 1, like it has to touch the axis at negative 1, mm -hmm. and then after that, it's going to go up, obviously, but then after that, as y, as x approaches infinity, it's going to start going back down to 0. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be like 1, 2 inflection points. Okay, alright. You're on the right track. You are on the right track. I, I wouldn't probably, I'm not sure if the way that you've said it would be an adequate explanation. Like, I don't know how many people are like, oh, of course. <laughs> you know? It's so obvious to me now. I am going to start to draw a picture in a second, but I hope make it clear. But before I do that, do you um, want to suggest something? You could have, so originally you would have one inflection in between the two. Okay, good pause. So. Yeah, before you go on. Before you go on. There are two inflections, right? And this is the first important point, and I was going to mention it, so you, since you have said it, I might as well. When you know this, right, a minimum and a maximum, they each have concavity, right? They each have concavity. A minimum is concave... Yeah. Up. 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 <coughs> and a maximum is concave... Down. 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 Now, that's actually... Good morning. That's actually not enough by itself to know that there is a change in concavity. Because I'm missing here. something. Something that's very, very important. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a graph. Here is a graph. It's got a, a maximum on one side and a minimum on the other, but there is no point of inflection. Why not? Because it doesn't have a common middle, like joining middle. Yeah, that's right. There's no actual point that I can point to. Like there's a changing concavity. But there's nowhere I can say, oh, there it is, because there's no there. Right? There's an asymptote. Okay. Every morning. It's a library. Yeah. It is. Oh, it is a library. Yeah. It's just the library. Okay. So therefore, what I actually need to add on to this, because Reynard was there and I stopped him. Right? This is like, it's like, it's like the Lego movie. It's like, you didn't let me finish. I died. Um, now, I need to show it's continuous, but that is not difficult. Once I've done that, see that there is a change of concavity between these. Number one, there's my first point of inflection. Okay, do you want to continue? Like, so, um, your second point of inflection, because it's, it goes negative, minimum, and then positive is um, maximum. So, at, at the positive side, um, it's concave down. And because it needs to approach the axis, it needs to go back around to flatten out again. Did you catch that? Mm. Yeah. That was it, wasn't it? Right? Let me see if I can draw a picture for you. What's the only way that this and this can fit together? Right? If you're going to approach, this is a, we have, we have language for this, that's a horizontal asymptote, right? A horizontal asymptote. So you've got this kind of shape, but you've got to get to that. You have to get to that. I've already shown that there's not going to be another stationary point over here, right? Because I've found, I found both of them. So the only thing you can possibly do is turn from concave down, down, to be concave up. Like that, in order to curl towards, that's actually the right language, to curl towards this asymptote. Okay? So, are you ready? 
Can we make the deduction? How would you word it? Okay, so here's my wording. It's not quite finished on the board, but the part that's missing is the part that I think you guys can do on your own. The way I would say it is, I have to put together, like, note the two facts that I'm putting together, which is the part that we discussed in detail. The part that I need is the local max and this horizontal asymptotic behavior that I'm getting there, right? So given these two things, there must be a point of inflection for some value of x after this, to the right of that, that's x is greater than 1, right? In order for this limit to work, right? It can't, it can't work unless it, it inflects back upwards, right? So there's the first point of inflection, or the second, depending on your order. In addition, for some value between these two, there must also be a change in concavity because the curve is continuous and there's a concave up point, concave down. Okay, and that's it. There's your two inflections. Now we're ready to draw this thing. Because of all the earlier parts, we actually know a lot about this graph. For instance, we know that there's a minimum x equals negative 1, but negative 1, x equals negative 1 is significant for another reason, namely... It's the, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the x-intercept, right? So what I have is a, is a double root at that point. So uh, it doesn't take too much imagination to see. We've already worked out what happens as x approaches positive infinity. What happens when x approaches negative infinity? Good. Yeah, there's no ambiguity there, is there? Right? This guy is racing off, and so is this one. right? So therefore, you have this incredibly steep behavior over here to the left of that stationary point, reaches the stationary point, just stops at the axis, and then it's going to come back up. Where's it going to come back up to? I already know this. The maximum one. At no, one. I'm going to get the intercept, which is y equals 1. So I have these two points. right? And then I know at x equals positive 1, then I'm going to hit my other turning point. Now, in order for me to do this properly, I do have to get some vertical scale happening. So here's a value I prepared earlier. That's the actual, now that I'm graphing now, I do need to know where the y value is. So if you pop in x equals 1, you've got 1 plus 1 all squared, which is 2 squared, which is 4, times e to the negative 1. So it's 4 over e, which you can pop into your calculator and get that value. Now, if that's where that is, I better make sure, like, if that's 1, then I guess 2 would be there. So I need to be somewhere about here. Right? These are little points of detail and attention that you need to, you can't just put your stage report wherever you like. Right? So I'm guessing it's somewhere like that. That's pretty turning pointy, right? And then what I just established from there is that I'm going to be approaching zero, right? So it inflects downwards like so. Do we have to do the asymptote? Uh, and yes, I would need to finish that off. I just need to put in that point there, one point B. And then in part C, I want to go point late, you know, a later this point over here, that I'm approaching y equals zero. Okay?